Hi everybody, I am Dawn with Grip Monkey Studios and this is my little painting show. So I am brand new to Twitch um, and I will be making plenty of mistakes I'm sure, but my lovely husband Tyler also with Crip Monkey is here helping me do everything that I need to do. So first let's introduce the minis that I'm going to be painting today. Um, these are from Mini Monster Mayhem and my husband will be putting up some links for his Patreon as well as where he is available on um, my mini factory. <laughs> I forgot the name of it, sorry. Um, but he does amazing prints. Uh, they're just, they're spectacular. The details that he gets, everything that he puts into these are just absolutely amazing. He does not, however, sell the physical prints. He only sells the STLs, but we are a licensed vendor for him. So you can go to our Etsy shop and our website um, to purchase his models printed out. Um, and that's, again, what we're gonna be painting. It, today is the Water Genie and the Water Spell, which is um, this month's release. So they are two of the smaller models, which is kind of funny, but they are absolutely spectacular. So uh, we also did 3D print these on my um, Elegoo Mars Pro. It took about eight and a half hours to print. I think it might've been a little bit over that, but it was overnight, so who really cares, right? Um, they, you know, the pre-supports that he puts on there work beautifully. Uh, it printed out like a dream. Uh, super happy with the details of these things, and I, I just can't stop staring at them, honestly. Um, and for the color scheme today, I'm gonna to be going with a lot of, I, I pre-painted these uh, with white, and I'm saying uh, a million times, I'm sorry. I pre-painted these white because I want to keep them really bright and wave-like looking, so that just, that base layer of white just really gave me a good place to start from. But I'll be using white, um, some blues, what is it, moonstone blue, Heather Blue, these are all uh, Reapers. I have a Desert Stone here just to have a little bit of skin tone that I might put on the Genie, the genie I'm not sure. Glacial Mist, Sorcerer's Mist, um, and I've got a couple of other colors sitting off to the side that I may or may not use, I haven't decided yet. I kinda go with the flow when I'm actually painting. Oh, and then I have my um, shade, which is a Citadel shade. Um, which is just a nice blue shade. Uh, other than that, I think we're pretty much good to go. I've got my standard brushes. I've got a nice little lineup of brushes, but I'll probably only end up using one almost exclusively like I usually do. I've got water, I've got Q-tips, and then I've got my so specific mini holder, you know. It's just a pill bottle that I bought a bunch of them off of Amazon, and I weighed it down with water just so that it if I do have a mini that is really heavy like this one is, it doesn't topple over. But uh, I think we're ready to get going. So I'm basically going to start off with my shade just to hit all of those low-lying areas. And it just honestly just does half the work for me. Put my little palette over here because I usually a lot of these are pretty um, pretty dark, and I don't like starting off that dark. I like to let it build up, so I usually water them down. Um, with the exception of things uh, from Vallejo, I don't usually water those down. They're typically my favorite paint. Um, hopefully you guys can see this really well, but this thing is just phenomenal. And the funny thing is about this one, I actually dropped it when I was getting everything set up and I knocked off like probably five or six little tiny bits and you, you just can't even tell. It's got so much detail that even missing some detail, it, it's just not lacking on anything. And then my water genie is just sitting off to the side because honestly, my biggest issue that I have is waiting for my layer to dry while I am working. 
So I like to work on any time I'm going to have minis that are done in similar color schemes. I try to have three or four going at once just to keep myself from doing, you know, layering on when I should be waiting for it to dry. And right now, I'm starting in his mouth simply because obviously I want that to be the darkest part. And you will notice that when I start to really pay attention to details, I'll tend to stop talking. But as my family will point out, I really only have two modes. I'm either never talking or never shutting up. But realistically, this this guy, as detailed as he is, I want to let those details sing through. So with him, I probably am only going to use um, the shade and then some dry brushing once this shade is set. He really won't need much more than that. I'll probably end up coming back over these teeth that he has coming out right here. Um, just to make sure that they're the whitest bit. Um, but it's really just going to be a matter of shade and, and highlight with this guy. He's just so phenomenal. The genie will have a lot more details on him to do, so he'll be my main focus. But again, I because I tend to not wait between layers, I want to get the shade on this guy first. That way I've got plenty of time to come back and, and get my highlights. If you guys have any questions at all, I'm happy to answer them while I'm, while I'm doing this. And thank you for joining me on my very first stream ever, too. Greatly appreciate it. I'm taking it fairly easy on the shade on the top and I've hit the underneath pretty heavy um, inside of his mouth and then underneath his jaw here um, but on his actual base piece in here I'm not taking it very heavy at all either because you know where the lights coming from And if I ever have a spot where I didn't want shade, nice little Q-tip with a little bit of water can just either dull it down or take it off completely. With that spot right there, I really want it gone, but that other spot was just taking it down a little tiny bit is good enough. On, you know, you can use the edge of paper towels as well. Uh, I just find a Q-tip a little bit easier to pick my spots a little more cleanly. And sometimes the extra water will just help it run where, where it should have gone in the first place. Right, I am gonna let that guy sit. And I'm gonna get a little mix up a little bit more of my shade for my genie to get him started. Normally my one of my favorite things to do is basing. Um, that's really the only issue I have with uh, mini monster mayhem is his bases are so amazing that there's just nothing that I feel like I need to add and it makes me sad but I mean this is phenomenal the swirl that he's got going into the the body of the gin and then coming up and over just this what looks like should topple over and it's just perfectly balanced I'm gonna take this center part pretty dark 
not for the shadow purposes, but just for that depth of water feel. I may decide to go ahead and make a larger base anyway, but he's so fun, precariously balanced like this that it just makes it to where I don't really think I want to add anything to it. I almost feel like I'd be distracting from the magic of, of his stance. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet, but I'm thinking that I want to take the genie's skin into that desert stone color. So that's why I have it set off over here for me. Um, and I might do a little bit of a wet blend of the desert stone out into a blue to kind of make him merging into water. Which I don't have a wet palette out here, but I do have um, parchment paper, which works too. And can't see through the hair. Which I normally don't wear down. That's okay. It's like every time I spin it, I see another little loop that I didn't notice before. It's funny how you can spend, you know, an hour or two painting a mini and, and constantly see something new. I'm just going around and picking out the places that I want. Realistically speaking, you could just soak him in the the ink and let it let it do its work, but and I did that when I first started painting. And it was a really great way to get definition where I felt like I was missing it. Um but after doing that for a while, it was fairly easy to transition over because I could see where those, the shade would go in naturally on its own. And then you just start seeing those on your own and you, you know where to put it and then you can just control it better and get those highlights and lowlights like you want them rather than just letting them happen naturally. Which is still one of those things that sometimes I'll make a brush stroke that I didn't mean to make, but, you know, as Bob Ross would always say, it's a happy little accident. get a little bit more dark in this pool. Just let it really soak in there. Just really give that feel that he's coming up from the depths of the ocean. So that's another thing too of using that desert stone color. Um, ocean foam is not just white, uh, just the tips of it are white. So taking that ocean, or sorry, that desert color <clears throat> into the, the foam areas that I'm going to hit on um, toward the end. And then making, you know, going from that desert stone to a mix between the desert stone and the white. Um, and then to that pure white is just going to really give it some depth to just make it feel like you're about to get splashed with water. I've got a little, few little spots that are a little darker than I wanted them, so just adding water with the paintbrush to kind of, one, smooth it out, um, and two, desaturate that color a little bit. 
but you can see I got a few little like lines kind of splash marks like that right there doesn't really look great but I can just using that water kind of clean that up um, the same thing with the that I was doing with the q-tip on the other one but this one I wanted to make sure I blended a little bit more into the mini all right I'm pretty happy with that get a few little more spots in here like I said I really want this inside to look just dark 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 I probably will even take a little bit of the purple shade I have sitting over here to put right down in that that spiral set that back down and let it dry a little bit I don't know if you can see this on screen you should probably there we go every time I'm drying my brush for anybody who's newer to painting I tend to twist it um, just to get that tip back get a sip of my coffee for a second I had to use my daughter's cup today because it's so cool all right so we are gonna come back to this guy I think I'm kind of happy with where his shade is so I think I'm gonna do a little dry brushing on him to see how that goes um, this is actually a makeup brush because the shorter brushes with the softer bristles just do so much better for actually dry brushing so and I tend to do a little bit wetter dry brush than most um, I'm just gonna hit those edges and I'm making sure the waves normally I would keep going one direction the whole time but you can see that the waves kind of come around and then go back down so I'm trying to stay with the flow of the mini itself um, I mean I'm just sitting here and thinking about all the times that I've played um, a caster and how much more fun it would have been to say you know okay I cast a water spell and then throw that guy out instead of saying you know where's what's my range on that again it just makes things a lot more fun to have cool minis sitting around you that is of course until you paint something because your husband asks you to in a very specific manner and then it sits in the shelf for like a year and your guys your whole party is sitting out on the table and you're so excited because we're about to do something really cool and then a big giant monstrous spire comes out and you're like damn it I painted that for you now you're gonna kill me with it and that's pretty much the summation of our marriage I paint it he kills me how fair is that that's a little much there that's better yeah I'm liking how that's looking I know it's making it look dirty right now but when I come back over it with that white it's gonna look phenomenal that's not where I'm supposed to be putting this and for those of you who are advanced mini painters you will very happily notice that my water is way over here and my coffee is way over there I think we've all learned that the hard way I don't think I'm going to take any of this brown inside his mouth, though. I've seen um, people who paint ex almost exclusively with dry brushing, and it's a very fast way to brush or paint. You get a lot done really quickly like that, but also just when you have something that's this spectacular there's really not a whole lot you need to do in the first place I think I'm going to dry brush a little bit of 
um, of this lighter blue. What is it? That's the moonstone blue uh, as well. Get my brush nice and clean. And I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of times where I check how much paint's on my brush by doing that rather than this, which I'm trying to be a good girl and do that, but no promises, guys. Okay, see, that's exactly what I'm saying. My blue is just blending in with that brown, so I have to set it down, walk away, and let's see what I can play with on him. I might actually go ahead and put a coat on him with his for his skin. My goal is to get both of these minis done in an hour so that you guys can see from start to finish. Obviously not the, excuse me, the primer coat, but um, I don't think really you guys want to see the primer coat. Who would? I don't like this brush. I don't know why I even had it over here. I'm very finicky about brushes. And this one, the it's probably only a dry brush brush now. The tip, it just don't like how rough that is. So I'm going to trade. Yeah, I think I am going to make most of his skin this desert color and then maybe wet blend into this blue at the base. Basic, uh, I mean, what I mean by base is where his skin is touching what is now forming into water. Which for anyone who doesn't know what wet blending is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's blending on the model while your paints are still wet so that you get a natural hue between them. Um, this is for some people very very easy, for others a little more difficult. Um, it's something that people with an airbrush just blow me away and they just do these amazing color blends and I am super jealous about it. I do have an airbrush. Um, I am not very accomplished with it yet. Right now I can basically base coat something. Um, and even then, <laughs> the last time I tried, I definitely had my blend off and I had way too much water so it just basically washed right off the mini. Which is fine because I'm learning. Just like anything else, it takes a while to get the hang of things. But I have, uh, I'm a patron of Michael Mordor, and he has amazing, um, amazing tricks and tips and everything else that an absolutely just like the most helpful mini painter. I mean, granted, it seems like. We're a really helpful crowd, honestly. It's every time I've ever asked any other mini painter for help, they just go above and beyond. But uh, on Michael's Discord, there's a bunch, it's called the Goblin Army, and they are super, super helpful. Even if Michael's not there to answer a question, um, anybody who is there that knows the answer, we all jump in and help each other so much. It's just a great community to be in. I find the same thing with the 3D printing, honestly. I get so much help when I need it, and it's it's so many good answers. And, you know, just like a lot of crafts and, and things that those makers out there work with, there's so many different ways to do things that one of the things that I really appreciate is when you're like, oh, well, this is how I did it. And, you know, here, well, that's wrong. You hear, oh, well, I hadn't thought of that. 
and then they try it too and they're like oh yeah I like that better or they say no my way worked better for me and then you try their way and you're like oh yeah that is better or you decide no that doesn't work quite well for me I'm loving how the blending of these two colors is working for me I hope you can see that just that transition between those two right there is really what I'm looking for with that wet blending one of my favorite things well my favorite things probably one of Tyler's least favorite things is the word eyeballs I don't know if you can hear but he's laughing um, one of the things that I'm, I'll do he'll be wanting to talk to me about something because um, I do actually just paint here in the living room and uh, basically most of our house is dedicated to gaming so uh, anyway um, he'll come over and he'll want to say something and the only thing I can manage is eyeballs. And that's my way of telling him, I'm in the middle of painting something that is extremely detailed. Um, I cannot speak right now, but I'm not ignoring you. So he doesn't think I'm ignoring him and I don't have to stop what I'm doing to look at him and, and deal with whatever the, the current situation is. So if you're ever busy don't want someone to think that you're ignoring them. Just tell them eyeballs. And finish what you're doing and then give them your full attention. But basically that stems from me in the middle of trying to paint someone's eyeball and I don't know about you but I can't really do anything other than get kind of a solid white in there and then get uh, get maybe a little black line especially on him I probably am going to take his eyes to this sorcerer's mist which is I don't know if you can see that it's a really pale blue or purple um, sorry I'm a little bit colorblind if blues and purples are a little bit of an issue for me which is why I'm painting all blue and purple tonight anyway um I think I'm just going to paint his eyes a solid color and kind of bring it up onto his eyebrows as well just to make it look like his eyes are kind of glowing. <laughs> okay. Could spend the next six hours detailing that wet blend right there and I need to leave it alone. It's one of the biggest problems I have is stop touching it. I'm basically, I'm just impatient is all it really boils down to. And the face on this guy is actually fairly small, so he's kind of going to be an eyeball situation for me. So I don't really want to get this brown in there where his eyes are because I want it such a bright color. Having that white be the only color there is really going to help pop it. gold though because I didn't realize but it looks like he's got uh, a nipple ring right there oh he's got one on the other side too <laughs> uh, I'll probably take his bracers gold as well we just moved a whole bunch of things around so I may have to go to a 
intermission to grab that gold when I'm ready for it, because it might take me a few minutes. Let's finish his face over here. This swath right here looks like a piece of his hair as well, so I'm going to leave that to do. I haven't decided. Maybe black hair. That's what I mean, it's just, for me, when I'm painting, um, unless I'm doing a commission for somebody, uh, I really just, as things are going, no, that is not hair. It doesn't have it on both sides. Anyway, I just usually kind of go where the flow is and decide colors and as I'm working. So this is a little change up for me, picking my colors beforehand. Get his little nose in there. Hopefully this is all in focus. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. I can't actually see the monitors from here. So Tyler is running the monitors and he'll let me know if there's any questions so that I can answer them. What I'll do is I'll mix a little bit of this desert sand with some white as well to come back and do a little, you know, some highlights to pop these pecs back out and such. That'll be dry brushing though. Probably will do a stream just on making a base for a mini because sometimes I can spend 10 minutes painting a mini and two hours making the base just because I really do enjoy that part so much. Uh, I do have uh, a mini that I was painting over behind me. I'm still in the process of it that just decided that as cool as the mini was, it needed to be really on a diorama. <laughs> just because, you know, and I had a square frame I wasn't using for anything else, so I filled it up with dirt and, well, not real dirt, but, you know, um, and made a whole little scene for the mini to sit on just because it needed it. 1996 is hello. Hi, how are you tonight? Thanks for joining us. Oh, apparently he has rings on his fingers too. Goes good in yourself? Pretty good. I am it I love this mini so much. He is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is a print from my mini, uh, sorry, mini Monster Mayhem. This is his water genie. He looks a mess right now. Um, but Ty, do you want to throw the graphic back up of what he looks like without all this half paint job done? <laughs> um just absolutely phenomenal prints that just every single thing I print from him is just amazing and I'm so happy with the quality. Those little fingers done. That is way too much paint on those fingers. Now we're just sitting back and enjoying painting. Um, let's see, I've been painting for 
Oh, crap. I don't even remember now. Ty, can you remember how long I've been painting? When did I started at Daikon? Uh, probably five years. Yeah, so I've been painting minis for about five years now. Um, and it's just, it seems like I learn something new every time I paint or every time I watch somebody else paint. And it's 96 says, nice. I don't paint minis myself. However, I am slowly creating a 5e homebrew Borderlands game series campaign. Ooh. It's right up our alley. Right? That sounds awesome. We do a lot of homebrews, honestly. I, I really enjoy them. Uh, my husband, Tyler, actually usually DMs for the household. <laughs> Um, but currently we are playing a homebrew by a friend of ours, Jake. Um, oh, I'm getting a detail here. Hold up. I'm trying to get in between these two little things. Haha, -ha, got it. <laughs> um, yeah, we just, we, we play a lot of homebrews. They're just so much fun. How far along are you on the, are you in planning stages or are you like ready to run it? Tom 96 says, yeah, I'm trying to create some new subclasses for the campaign as well. Only need to finish the druid, monk, and fighter. Oh, that's, you are really close then, aren't you? That's awesome. He looks so sloppy right now. It's so funny how, like in anything that I do with art, I just have to remind myself, just keep going. So I'm, I'm Dory all over again. Just keep painting, just keep painting. <laughs> because it, it always seems to me that, that all these other people do these amazing things. It's like they just, they blink and they're there. And I have to remind myself, I. I'm not like that. I, I have to work and work and work and work. Um, and even when I think things don't look good, I just keep going and eventually it's like, boom, it's there. It's like, where'd that come from? <laughs> 1996 continued, then I need to start on stating the monster, stating the monsters and creating a new loot system. Ooh. What are you doing differently for the loot? Because I'm a murder hobo. I I want the loot. <laughs> That's not actually true. We usually forget to loot. <laughs> In this one, at least with Jake. <laughs> Jake is from Parlor Gaming, which... wet blending on the back now. A little more water than I need. So me, again, Q-tip. Kind of using it to blend it a little bit as well, which seems to be working very well. Q-tip in hand, not right brush. Didn't even realize it. All right, I am gonna say that his skin is base coated. And there's a few spots that need to be touched up, but I'm going to set that guy aside again. I love how that blend turned out. Especially like right here is now my favorite spot for right now anyway. I'm going to set him aside again, and I'm going to bring back my other little guy, my water spell, because he should be ready for me to blend a little bit of this blue on now. 
And again, I'm just using dry brushing. I don't really think, with the, the brown, I use the dry brushing kind of in this lower areas. Um, and the blue, I'm trying to push into the other non-brown areas, sort of. It's hard to explain, but you can kind of see what I'm doing better than me explaining that part. And I want to let some of that white still show through. I'm going to come back and wipe, uh, use my dry brush with white as well. But again, just making sure to stay with the flow of where the mini is going, just because he has all of these swirls that he's doing naturally. Well, not naturally. Monster Mayhem did an amazing job with this guy. And he's super helpful too. A little bit of a support fell off. Uh, Elm 1996 continued to, I believe, answering your questions. Well, it's Borderlands, so it has to be some new tables for various weapons since they all have the different brands as well as a rarity percentage. Yeah. Uh, Jake from Parlor Gaming hopped in. He said, Retroscape shirt. <laughs> Just for you, Jakey. <laughs> uh, and then Elm 1996, if you guys ever played the Borderlands video games series, you'll know that the loot generation is key. And yes. Me and, yes. me and Nick have played that a lot. I think Cora's played that a lot, too. Um, and, and Jake's just saying hi. He's actually on another stream on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go have fun, Jake. Um, I'm just going to hit a few little spots inside of his mouth with the dry brushing, but again, I want to keep that fairly dark, so I don't want to hit too much. But this side spot, I plan on taking really bright. Um, yeah, my, my husband, my son, and my daughter have played Borderlands. I have not. Um, it's not that I don't enjoy video games. I do, but I lose a lot, but that's okay. I'm one of those people that, especially in, um, uh, first person shooters, I am what you, I think the technical term for me is bait. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's my name. But that's okay, as long as the team wins, because it's not like I was actually going to help them anyway. Remember when there was one time where we were going around and I had a friend trying to teach me how to shoot, and the other people in the group were supposed to leave me alone so I could learn how to shoot, except I accidentally shot a few of them. I really wasn't trying to shoot them. Um, and so they thought that meant I was open game and it was all about five seconds dead. Look, I'm away, alive. Nope, dead. No, I'm alive. Nope, dead. <laughs> I don't spend much time alive in those type of games, but they are still pretty fun. Okay. I am going to set him back aside. Let that blue coat, which I'm loving, dry that some. And then, and this is why I have like 15 paper towels so that I can move them away when I get too full. Um, yes? Well, I was just saying, Elm 1996 going on with the, the Borderlands thing. I also need to create some new unique weapon effects as well as for the red text loot. I actually have some done already. Nice. That is cool. And Jake just wanted to make sure you knew that he has us muted because he's streaming, so he, he doesn't hear responses. <laughs> All right. So now I am going to do a little bit of the darker blue. This is the, uh, let's see, that was the moonstone. That's the heather. Glacial mist. So I'm going to use a little bit of the glacial mist. I'm not quite dry brushing, but I don't have a whole lot on my brush. Need a little bit more than that. Because I'm just wanting to kind of deepen some of these ones, but I don't want to get rid of my deep, deep area. And I hope you guys can see past his head down into this well that he's created. Because I really don't want any white around this part. I may come back and hit 
just the very, very tips of them with one of these lighter blues, but probably not a white just because I want to keep that really the depths look. But under him here, there's not a whole lot of um, ink or the shade that went in there. So I want to add some, some more darker colors that are not quite as dark as the shade. And then I'll come back over and dry brush some of these to bring the highlights back out. Yeah, I know they all really enjoyed Borderlands uh, and the, I can't say much about the gameplay or anything else, but um, the art of it is spectacular. Uh, I always enjoyed kind of watching them play a little bit. I never, like I said, I never played it myself, but. Um, oh, 1996 is sharing their favorite one that they created for this, uh, this homebrew. Cheap doll hair, a Theodore dagger. When you toss this dagger, it materializes an astral projection of a murderous doll that attacks the target you threw it at. This lasts two rounds and then returns to the wielder. Oh, I love that. That's so, that's so funny. And if you want to play, I mean, I'd, I'd play it. That is so funny. Um, we have a board game, actually, uh, House of Possession. And one of the things we have in it is a creepy doll that is a, the haunt token. Oh. Uh -huh. So yeah, we're, we're right there with you with the, that's just, yeah, like, like Tyler said, that's right up our alley. Oh, no, the red text is the quote. <laughs> I see, want to play? Gotcha. <laughs> but I'd still play it. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things that I love about going to conventions. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a long day standing behind a vendor booth forever. But then, you know, when the vendor booths close down and we get to go and, and play homebrews and play, you know, anything, it's, it's pretty much, we love it. We're going to be in, um, where's Daikon? right in the edge of Illinois. I always want to say decanter, but that's not right, is it? Decatur, you mean? Decatur. Uh, I'm so bad with directions and, and now places. You've blown it away from me by calling Decatur decanter. <laughs> Sorry. I will check. Um, but yeah, we'll be at DICON in a couple of weeks. And uh, about a month after that, we'll be in Kansas City. Uh, at CantCon, and when we go to CantCon, we will be there with Jake. So we're going to play our, our his homebrew um, in person for the first time, which will be so much fun. DICON is at Collinsville, Illinois. Collinsville, Illinois. How did I forget that? That's so because silly. Said decanter. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. So I switched back over to that lighter blue. Um that I was using to, to blend because I want to blend down into um, this darker blue now. A lot of this is not really wet anymore, but because of its blue to blue, I'm not too concerned with a harsh line and I'll lose a lot of those harsh lines, the harsh color changes is what I mean by that. Uh, when I dry brush, those will disappear anyway. How are we looking on time anyway, sweetheart? We are almost 52 minutes in. So I lied at the beginning of this and I absolutely am not gonna be able to finish this in an hour, but I am happy to continue to paint. If you guys wanna stay and watch until I'm finished, that's cool by me. I'll eventually get faster and better at streaming. And I love creepy dolls. Sorry, that's still like stuck in my head now.
I don't like creepy dolls, but I like creepy dolls. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm one of those people who I love to watch scary movies, but then I can't go in to bed and, like, turn the lights off. I have to have a night light. And then there's some scary movies that I just, no, I, nope, can't do it. I'm a wuss. You don't need to laugh so much at that. You're getting over there. Just giggling at me. All right. I think what I'm going to do is switch over to that even darker blue. I don't know if you guys can see my palette here. So I've got the white, the desert. This is that glacial mist that I was talking about. This is the main blue that I've been... Um, blending up here in his stomach and down. That's the moonstone blue. This is the heather blue, and then this over here is that glacial mist, or I'm saying that backwards. Yeah, no, this is heather blue, and this is glacial mist, sorry. Um, so obviously for minis, I have way too much paint out here, but the lids, like most of you know, those get clogged, so I took the lid off and poured didn't go well. <laughs> um, but I think what I'm going to do now is switch over to this color and get in that well some more because I've lost a lot of that shade. So I just want to deepen that back up again. And I think this color is going to be the one to do it for me. I don't have a lot of airflow right here. I, I mean, I have a fan blowing, but it's not terribly close to me. So realistically, I wish I had grabbed my wet palette out, but that paint with just a little dab of water came right back to life. So it's not really that big of a deal. I'm just kind of do it on the towel. I'm just kind of dabbing like this to just get those rough bristles that are not together to give me kind of a splash look because I don't really want a solid color on this. I really want, you know, it's water so it should be fluid, but it's got a lot of color changes and color differences. And I even got out my uh, Phantom Glow. You can see from the bottom, the color is pretty bright, but a lot of shallower water will have that green tone to it. I don't know if I'll end up using it tonight for sure, but I've got it out just in case. And that just reminded me, I still need to grab that gold for his cuffs. And I think I'm gonna make these, it almost looks like um, shoulder pads to me. So I think I'm gonna, I might make those gold as well, just to accentuate the, the jewelry that Jens usually wear. I keep thinking he looks so messy, but it's water, it's supposed to be messy. I might put a little bit of this color inside the spell's mouth as well. I think that'll look really good. Just to, again, deepen that color. Just using that almost stippling effect. Okay, I'm going to set him off to the side for a second. And while I've got this color, I am going to go ahead, especially in, hope you guys can see this, especially in the back of his mouth back here. And it's really cool too, because the spell is not solid all the way through. You can see through him. And I'm like, I just, I love that little detail. Yeah, that's going to be perfect in there. How 
1996 asks, what's your guy's favorite 5e class? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, Mine's Hexblade right now. Because <laughs> that's what I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm playing a fighter and a Hexblade. I would say... I'm struggling right now between Bard and Cleric, mainly because I, for the longest time, we were playing um, a reskin of 5e with um, rats and mice, and it was by Dice Geeks, and it was called Realm... Realms of Understreet. Realms of Understreet. That's, thank you. I'm so bad with names. At Dice Geeks on Twitter. Yes. Um, and it was so much fun and I was playing a bard and I was, uh, my name was Clarence and it was, it was really funny because we had a bunch of, um, pre-gens that we were just like, well, we'll just play once with these pre-gens and if we like the, the skin, then we'll, you know, we'll make characters and all of that. And we finished the first night and we're like, okay, yeah, we, we all really enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and, and make characters. And I was like. I don't really want to. I kind of love Clarence. And everybody else in the party was like, yeah, I, I just want to stay with my character. So we just keep kept playing with, the, with them. Um, but one of Clarence's faults was that he, um, he would do anything for a pretty face. So made it really difficult when it was, <laughs> whenever some, something bad was happening and Somebody would ask for help, and I shouldn't really help them. I would have to look at Ty and go, what do they look like? And he's like, oh, no, you'd think they were attractive. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have to, I have to. Um, but he was also very easily distracted. So the party quickly learned that they could control Clarence by yelling harp. And then I would, I would come back to whatever they were saying, so much so that one of my best friend was actually playing with us. Uh, we were in Walmart one day. And I walked over away from her for something and she yelled out heart when I came running back to her. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that in real. But right now I'm playing a um, cleric uh, that is pretty freaking awesome. So it's like, it, it's hard for me to say which one's my favorite because realistically, both of those characters are just so much fun to play. Elm 1996 is uh, letting us in on more on the uh, the Borderlands homebrew. Uh, Bard and Cleric, I can work with that. Domain of Technology, there are some gods who simply view progress more than anything. Those without magic have progressed far and now you can channel the powers of various technologies. College of Dubstep. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Ever want to Ever want to just be heard or to take something awesome and then make it awesome amazing? <laughs> With your knowledge of sound and technology, you warp your music into something that truly shakes the world. That's the description of some of my new subclasses. That's fun. If you want to hear the abilities, let me know. Um, I would say the tech one, not the dubstep one. <laughs> because I had this... Um professor that was obsessed with dubstep and so it just brings back horrible memories of oh by the way the finals next week let's talk more about music wait what's on the final oh let's talk about music i hate you so much <laughs> so i have bad memories of dubstep i'm just dry brushing over um the water spell with the white uh, and this is just pure white trying to be gentle to leave my other colors there and then in other places I want it bright so I'm hitting it pretty hard but you can see how it almost has that desert left us kind of almost a yellow tone that just gives that that beachy foamy feel I might not even have to hit the teeth with a brush anymore. This br dry brush is pretty much hitting the spots I wanted to anyway. So that's just going to save me a little bit of time there too. 
1996, says, I made the dubstep one because of Claptrap. Claptrap is a robot in Borderlands. Uh, kind of helps you through the beginning of the game. Okay, gotcha. Um, I, I think it works, honestly. I think it's funny as hell. Um, it's just not something that, like I said, just because of that one professor. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to for the domain of technology, I believe this is for the domain spells first. Grease, false life. Third is arcane lock. Magic weapon. Fifth is lightning bolt. Major image. Seventh, arcane eye. Elemental bane. Ninth, pass wall. Mislead. Yeah, that does. Uh, there was one in there. Um, go back three from the... To the third? Arcane Lock, Magic Weapon? No, it was something else. Lightning Bolt, Major Image. Major Image, I think that's one. What's after Major Image? Arcane Eye. No, Major Image was the one. What's, what's that one? Major Image? Yeah. You want me to look it up? Because I don't No, remember. I'm assuming he'll... <laughs> I'm asking him a question. I thought you were making sure you know we got the books sitting right here. <laughs> no, let. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to keep all of these areas right around that mouth really, really bright because it even deepens how dark inside of his mouth is and it just gives that depth. So I'm going to hit them a couple of times with that. Barely hit underneath him at all. Might have been loud somewhere and spiked or something. What? I said we might have been loud and spiked. Oh. Redlined on the volume or something. A little bit more highlight up here, but I think I'm going to bring a little more of that blue in with that white. Just kind of mix it on my paper towel here. Because I want this area a little bit brighter, but I still want to keep that blue feel. set him back aside for a minute. I think I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing on this guy. I'm going to hit him with this light blue first. I love this little holder my, my best friend got me for my paintbrushes. It's so nice just to be able to lay them down and not have to worry about getting them standing upright and not falling over and not worrying about them rolling off anywhere either. This one's getting a little too wet on me again. Um, 1996 is answering you. Do you create the image of an object, a creature, or some other visible phenomenon that is no larger than a 20-foot cube? The image appears at a spot that you can see within range and lasts for the duration. It seems completely real, including sound, smells, and temperature appropriate to the thing depicted. You nice. create sufficient heat or cold to cause damage, a sound loud enough to deal thunder damage or deafen a creature, or a smell that might sicken a creature, like a troglodyte stench. As long as you are within range of the illusion, you can use your action to cause the image to move any to any other spot within range. As the image changes location, you can alter its appearance so that its movements oops, appear natural for the image. For example, if you create an image of a creature and move it, you can alter the image so that it appears to be waking, walking. Similarly, you can cause the illusion to make different sounds at different times, even making it carry on a conversation, for example. Nice. Physical interaction with the image reveals it to be an illusion because things can pass through it. A creature that uses its action to examine the image can determine that it is an illusion with a successful intelligence investigation check against your spell save DC. The creature discerns the illusion for what it is. The creature can see through the image, and its other sensory qualities become faint to the creature. You asked for it. <laughs> I did. Thank you very much. Um, that is one thing that 
that we do a lot of different games. Um, we have an entire bookshelf downstairs in our game room dedicated to role-playing and we have so many different systems that a lot of times when we sit down to play something I have to like okay what game is this and what does it use because <laughs> um, we, we just we I, I really do enjoy D&D &D, and that's usually what we play the most but it is absolutely not the only thing we play as I was airbrushing, or airbrushing, good lord, dry brushing down here at the bottom, I added a little bit of that glacier. Um, let me see if, no, Sorcerer's Mist, the purplish shade, um, into it to bring some purple up into it so that it's not just only his eyes have purple. Just little hints of it, basically. I think that this is part of the tech domain. First level tech detector, you gain the ability to use an action to detect any technology or magic tech in a 30 foot radius and where it is for one minute and can identify the brand used, if any, in the technology or magic tech. This can be used a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier per long rest. So it's along the lines of detect magic. Kind of what it feels like, but I like it. Yeah, it's a good shift for uh, Borderlands. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I'm just basically doing the same thing. I'm just going around, kind of sticking to the bottom um, and switching in between colors to brighten it up as I go, um, and just uh, again. Normally I would keep my dry brush in one motion, but I'm staying with the mini and with the waves itself. I missed tech spurt. First level tech spurt. Gain proficiency in investigation in Arcana, but use your wisdom when it pertains to tech or magic tech. Gotcha. doubt you can hear it, but our youngest is in the room whispering to her father at the moment. <laughs> I don't know if we should say what we were talking about, though. It had to do with the award she just, uh, the, the gift she won yesterday on uh, Hot Makes. Oh, yeah? I don't know if Mom can see that from there. Oh, you got your card? That's awesome. Plus another 10. What was that for? That's awesome. Yes, I think we should. What's a cleric without its new channel divinity? Channel divinity, technology manipulations. As an action, you can increase or decrease the damage by one damage dice ranking by of any amount of tech or magitech weapons within 30 feet of you up to your proficiency for one minute. This includes Magitech or tech constructs and vehicles can mix and match. A lot of work going into this homebrew. Yeah, yeah. You are, you're definitely knocking it out of the park on that one. This sounds like a lot of fun. When you shift the realm on something like this, there, there's definitely a lot more work than just making your own setting yeah. in another fantasy world, for instance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I am lucky in that aspect that I don't just very, very lightly hitting these ridges that are up coming up his side because I want to pop them out, but I don't want them white at all. Um, I'm very lucky in the fact that Ty is such a good, um, well, I'm going to say he's a good husband because he DMs. <laughs> sitting here no just because you dm for me and i never have to worry about finding a dm <laughs> or gm whichever you prefer well, i know he prefers dm but you know to me the terms are inter interchangeable oh 
careful. I know, I know. My point is, it's interchangeable to me that whichever one you prefer to be called is what I'll call you. Elm 1996 continues. Sixth level tech shielding. You can use a reaction when you or a creature you can see is hit with an attack within 30 feet of you. Add 1d10 plus wisdom modifier temporary hit points to that creature. This does not replace the temporary hit points gained by a personal shield, but instead can refill any that is missing. This increase to 2d10 at 14th level. This ability can be used equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. Very cool. All right, I am going to take a few minutes to find, I'm going to need my black um, and that gold that I was referring to so that I can get the other details on the top of him done. So we'll be back in a few moments, okay? Okay, sorry about that, and ugh, my hair is everywhere right now. Um, so I found my gold that has been used so much that you can no longer read the text on the bottle. <laughs> I also got my Screaming Bell, which is a citadel, and it has, it's hard to tell with the paint like this, but it actually has like a metallic shine to it. So between those two and this bronze scorched metal, that's what that one's called. But again, you can see how much I use this one. It's faded really quickly too. <laughs> um, it Between one of those three is what I'll use for his jewelry on his fingers, his wrist brace, and probably, well, the ripple nipple rings as well, but probably the pieces on his shoulders. Um, and then while I was looking, I grabbed my gloss varnish because they're water, so they definitely should be all done in shine. So since I know I'm going to use the black for his hair, I'm going to go ahead and get that shaken up and get that out because I still can't decide between those three for his jewelry. And thank Elm 1996 for for continuing the Borderlands content for the 5e homebrew. Uh, eighth level Divine Strike. Once on each of you turns, when, once on each of your turns, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can cause the attack to deal an extra 1d8 lightning or acid damage to the target. When you reach 14th level, the extra dam damage reaches 2d8. Nice. He's got earrings, too. All I'm doing here is using this hand to hold the mini, where he's dry, obviously, and then using this hand is braced just to steady my hands. Not that they're super steady in the first place, but it's better than nothing. That's one of the reasons I like the pill bottle so much for holding my minis, is that uh, it's just, it fits really well in my hand. L 1996, 17th level shutdown. You can use Ooh. an action to cause any magic tech, tech weapons that are branded within 20 feet of you to revert to unbranded weapons for one minute. And any tech, Magitech based vehicles or constructs that are large or smaller to shut down for one round and become stunned. Vehicles and constructs affected by this also have disadvantage for one minute. Nice. Any unbranded tech, Magitech weapons or items are unusable for a number of rounds equal to your wisdom modifier and shields are disabled if not biological. You are immune to this ability. This ability can be used once per long rest. That's the cleric. Nicely done. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Well done. All 
I may have missed this or I just forgotten it, but um, did you mention what the, is it going to be called a cleric or are you giving it a new class name? little goatee as well. I believe that is domain of technology. I just assume that was the domain like a cleric has domains they pick oh, from. Yes, I, I think you're right. That's probably that. Well, the classes are all the same. Okay. Um, That's probably better just so that people have something familiar, they know what they're picking from. Right, I think, oh, I was about to say, I think I've got all his hair, but I missed that big, giant, long braid he has. And I'm just thinning down my paint a little bit so that I can, um, I'm just literally dropping in a drop over on this edge that I'm working in. Just because, again, I don't, tend to like paint too thick. I don't want it to fill the gaps. I want it to fall into them. I have this random little hair I doubt you guys can see it on my paintbrush. Normally, I take my scissors and clip that off, but I don't have my tiny scissors over here. I, right now, I just have my giant scissors. So my tiny brush is not gonna work. So I will simply ignore it. But that's why every now and again, you see me twisting my brush, is to make sure that that random hair that does have paint on it is not going to touch the mini. Basically because it's being a stupid head is the technical term for it. Just in case you're wondering. I have the uh, Retroscape uh, stream just ended and I noticed that Jake added in our, uh, our uh, current stream. Gotcha. A link to it from over there. And I've, honestly, I'm sorry, Jake. I forgot you guys were streaming tonight. Otherwise, I would have delayed. He probably hasn't, but makes me feel better to say it. <laughs> now, 1996 is, you know, this entire campaign planning started because of a barbarian subclass homebrew that I found, Path of the Psycho. Oh, that is an outstanding name. <laughs> that is a really good name. That makes me want to play it. <laughs> Yeah, I really was enjoying our um, Dice Geeks campaign, um, but then COVID, right? So hopefully we'll we'll get back to that campaign as well fairly soon. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure I make goofy faces while painting but I know they're not as nearly as goofy as what my husband makes when he's doing something that he's got to pay attention to. I'm sure that's true. And eyeballs. Just getting that tiny little edge of the braid back here. Elm 19. 96 says, talk, talking about the Path of the Psycho uh, homebrew subclass. So when I saw a subclass based on him, I knew I had to make a world for it. Very much so. It's usually how it goes, right? You get something, you're like, just barely, like this is the coolest thing ever and whoever is doing it is just barely seems like they scratch the surface of what it could be and you're like this must go on i don't i don't know if you remember this daughter but the the psycho from borderlands is the one with the gas mask yes like, yeah yeah but i remember seeing him okay now 
Jake from Parlor Gaming says, and now I'm over here. What are we working on? We are working on the Water Genie from Mini Mayhem. Ugh, I always do this. It's so hard. Mini Monster Mayhem. Sorry. And the Water Spell. So I figured I would do, you know how I am with my 3D printer. I like to fill up my build plate. Um, so these two fit fairly nicely on the plate together. Uh, but they also, in the same field, they have the lesser water elemental and the greater water elemental that I'll be doing soon. But these two are coming along quite nicely. Um, Ty, if you want to show up, throw up that graphic again. Of which one, I'm sorry? Of the what we're painting so he can see what it looks like without all the mess that I've made. <laughs> yeah, I put that up now. Okay. Um, and I've just dipped into the purple so that I can go ahead and do eyeballs. Instead of just saying eyeballs, I'm going to actually paint eyeballs. So I really will be quiet for a moment. And welcome, Jake, and I'm sorry before I start painting. I am sorry I, inter I forgot you were streaming tonight. Otherwise, I would have waited. He said, oh, cool, nice. Elm 1996 says, to quote the best playable character in Borderlands, I have the shiniest meat bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no making me laugh when I'm doing eyeballs. That's not allowed. Behave. Or you get a whole pa half of a face painted with the same thing. Elm <laughs> 1996 says, sorry. <laughs> so I am hitting, hang on. I am hitting more than what I would normally for the eyeballs, and hopefully you can see that pretty well, because I kind of want it to, I'm hitting above on the eyebrow and right below the eyebrow, I mean, to make it look like his eyes are glowing, that purple glow. And right now it just looks a mess, but I'm going to bring back that... Uh, my brown in a minute when that I'm going to give that a minute to dry and I'll go back over the bridge of the nose to kind of separate the eyes back out again. But now it is decision time. I have to pick my metal color and I still can't decide. Elm 1996 says, to be fair, I'm new and don't know what makes you laugh. <laughs> this is true. Um, Jake from Barlow Gaming says, what's printing over in the corner? The oh, oh, okay. I'm like, what corner? My printers are downstairs, Jake. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, that's actually these guys printing is what it is. Uh, it's a time lapse we did last night of these guys on the printer itself. So, and to answer the other question, it pretty much anything makes me giggle. So, you're screwed. Sorry. You are. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> okay, um... Oh, I don't, I'm not going to use the bronze because that blends in with his skin too much. I think for that exact reason, I'm going to go with this red just to really make it stand out. So shake that guy up because I don't use this one very often. Jake from Parlor Gaming says, I like it. It's cool to see the time lapse. Ty did a really good job um, of setting up the... Uh, doing the, the time lapse and editing it and everything else. This one I'm just going to use straight out of the bottle because I don't have all that much that's going to be doing it. So I'm not going to bother putting it. Plus, this type of paint I hate pouring out. Um, yeah, Ty did a really great job of editing that down and getting it working really, really awesomely. Um, it was just a, an idea I had of just a little bit of extra content. Um, when I'm doing something boring, then there's something else for you to look at. You know what I mean? Um, also, it's, it's just cool. <laughs> um, I was hoping to have both printers going for this time lapse, um, but I had to change a, I'm stuttering because I'm doing something very detailed, sorry. Uh, not stuttering, but stopping in moments. Um, I had to change my screen on my Mar my regular Mars because um, I have the Elegoo Mars and the Elegoo Mars Pro. Uh, I had to change the screen, and when I did, which is the second time I have, um, the 
the screen on the the top screen is what I replaced, but now the screen on the front won't actually turn back on, so I can't push any buttons. Um, so I need to call their support, which I've never had to do, but I have heard that they are amazing uh, to work with. So I'm hoping that they're going to tell me, hey, idiot, plug this part back in and I'll get it going again. But for right now, unfortunately, I'm down to one resin printer, which is silly to say, but it makes me so sad. You know, I think I might get the gold out for the rings on his fingers. I don't know yet, though. We'll see. I really like this red. I'm glad I went with this red. It makes me think of um, Jafar whenever, at the end of Aladdin, when he got... Hmm, spoilers. Okay, everyone's been warned. Spoilers. Whenever he got turned into a genie. <laughs> it reminds me of the wrist braces that got clamped on him. Ah, too much. Okay. So how did your stream go, Jake? I know there's this weird delay. <laughs> I've got to get used to that. Jake Parlor Gaming says, pretty good. It was just a test more to let Daniel and I work on things. Oh, very cool. It's kind of what I'm doing is testing equipment setup, which I believe is going really well. I think everyone can see fairly clearly what I'm working on. and I think that next time... I'm going to get your top-down camera a little bit lower, a little bit closer to what you're working on. Would it be better, like... Uh, is it going to be better for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really comfortable painting exactly where I'm painting, so if it's a matter of lowering the camera... Yeah, I, I, I can do that for next time. Okay. Uh, it's not bad, it's just I think we can be a little closer. Yeah. Uh, Jake from Parlor Gaming says, we also are going to be doing bi-weekly streams starting the 8th, we hope. Each stream we are going to focus on one of our labs. Nice. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think between uh, Parlor Gaming and, and uh, Crit Monkey Studios that we're going to end up streaming five days a week here pretty soon. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Cora is working on her um, her setup and, and what she's going to stream as well. And my, my streams will, will stick mainly to painting or um, mini base building. Um, just depending on what I need to do at the moment. I do have a turtle that I need to paint um, that he printed in, it took me, I think it was seven, eight prints, eight different prints to get all of his pieces printed. So that will definitely not be a one sitting painting job. Was that six, seven days? Yeah, that one, which I thought at first it was um, longer than, Cth more than Cthulhu, but I was wrong. He, he took less time than Cthulhu, but Cthulhu turned out awesome. He actually, our Cthulhu, I'm so proud of, lives, he now lives under our TV um, on the, I don't know, whatever that's called. I don't know what it's called. The things that hold the things underneath the TV that you need to have right there that you don't really want to have right there because everything should be on the wall. I love my floor space, so I don't like things not on the wall. But that was another one that I printed, um, and it was a Kickstarter I did probably a year, more than a year back and was so intimidated to even try to print something in that many pieces 
And then it got to the point where I had printed so many different things that I was just like, why was I ever even scared of this? The creator had done an amazing job with the supports and, and I'm actually blanking on the creator right now and I, we, I will find it and, and let you know. Um, but he did such an amazing job with the, the pre-supported files and all the different kinds of files. Um, it was just, I, looking back, I'm like, I was such a goofball for even being afraid of that. As you can see, I typically twist my minis in every conceivable position to find every little nook and cranny that needs to be painted. 1996 says, uh, things to hold the width so not on the things. Crystal clear. I believe. It's furniture, man. It, Who cares? It's a, yeah, it's a TV stand whenever you're not putting your TV on yeah. the stand and you're hanging it on the wall instead. It's, it's, it's a TV stand where the yeah. TV doesn't go on. <laughs> if it doesn't have to do with gaming, I don't need to know the words. <laughs> That's how I feel about that one. Ah, that makes more sense than 1996 says. Basically, it's the thing that holds my Cthulhu. That's what that is. <laughs> it's a Cthulhu stand. It's a Cthulhu stand. Actually, right now, um, one of the minis that Michael Mordor painted for me, uh, the Dance of Death from Reaper, is sitting right there next to Cthulhu as well. So, so, so it's a, a mega mini stand? It's a mega mini stand. That's... That's the technical name for it. There you go. We figured it out. I have a hair tickling my nose. Jake, aren't you proud of me? I'm wearing my hair down. I actually forgot how long it was. It's weird, right? I am having trouble getting this little spot that is this swoop thing. Which basically, like I said, it looks like shoulder pieces, but it goes right next to his neck. I'm trying desperately not to hit his neck. Jake from Parlor Gaming says, it looks very nice. Yours is about twice mine, we will both just braid our hair for CanCon. <laughs> uh, Isabella suggested she could braid my hair for me for this. And I'm like, no, that's okay. Just do a French braid. And she's, she's pretty good at it, but she usually has a couple of little pieces that stick out because, well, it's not her fault. It's my hair's fault. But then they usually are sticking out right by my glasses and they just keep getting caught over and over. It really annoys me. Uh, I got a little bit too much right there. Yeah, I'm glad that I went with the red. That really pops off. All right, nipple ring time, yay. I mean, why would you do that? That's just, <laughs> it just seems so painful. Detail. Oh, why would you do it in real life? I, mean, I can't answer that. <laughs> it seems so painful. But yes, for the mini, it is a good detail. Because, I mean, it, really, gens are usually fairly um, decorated, for lack of a better term. My coffee's starting to wear off. do this. I just stuck my finger right where I painted. And as you can see, my hands get, well, actually, they're fairly clean. I usually get pretty bad. I'm 
I'm not really liking the purple on his eyes. It's not quite bright enough for me. So I may water down some white just to, because I, I want the purple color, but it's not shiny enough. It's just, it just kind of looks like a blob. It looks like nothing. So I think I'll probably use that white to brighten it up some and then maybe use a little bit of that purple shade just to like a almost like an eyeliner underneath the eye which is not easy to do but it's easier than painting eyeballs just saying all right i am going to go ahead and get this gold open because i do want to do his rings because he's got a couple well he's even got a thumb ring Oh, that is completely clogged. Oh, that might have opened up. Nope. And that is why I have too much paint on my palette. It's because I have to open all of these like that. I don't know if you could see that, but I had to take that piece out and pour it. Close that up before I knock it over. This other one's got a slightly better tip now that I know it's got that loose hair. Let's see. It's really not going to show up a whole lot, but I think it's going to give it just enough shine compared to his skin because when I do use the gloss varnish, I will use it everywhere that's metal and everywhere that's pure water, and I'll use a, a brushy stroke in this wet blended area, but his actual skin, I will have, I'll cover in a mat that I have um, over there somewhere. We'll find it later. Uh, just to make his skin not shiny, but everything else to be shiny. And if I was going to make a base, uh, one of the things that I love doing water effects with is this, I'm gonna knock the mini over, this gloss medium. And the trick to doing this is pouring it on real thin, letting it thicken up which it does fairly slowly but you can pour it on and work on other things um, and as it thickens as it dries out you can manipulate it into the swish of a wave you just have to work with it slowly um, it's one of my favorite things to use to do water with um, especially well I'll even pour a cure a, a UV cure resin that's clear and then use that over the top of it to make the ripples in the water um, so that they're 3D, not just painted flat on there. So it, it works really well for a multitude of things. Although Jason from Parlor Gaming says, this stream is making me realize I need to set up my workshop table so I can paint minis again and build model mechs. Yep. That sounds fun too. Yeah. Uh, one of the ladies that works with our daughter, Cora, her husband builds mechs. And when she was telling me about the, the little robots that he paints, she didn't use the word mech. She said the little robots he paints. I assumed she meant little robots. <laughs> So I had some uh, older minis that were actual mechs. So I, I got them out and I, I gave them to her um, because I don't typically paint anything that's um, tech wise. I usually stick to fantasy sort of things. Not that I'm opposed to it. I just never seem to do those but anyway um so i i gave her those and she's like oh wow these are tiny i'm like well how small are the things that he paints and she goes 
oh, I don't know, maybe about to his knee. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> that is not what I thought you meant. I'm just going over his skin tone where it, that first coat didn't fully uh, cover and then covering up and then fixing any spots where I, like where I dabbed my finger right after I painted the nipple ring, I'll go over and I'll fix that with the skin tone. And then I'll fix his nose, like I was saying earlier. But at this point, I'm really down to the final little details, which unfortunately can be the thing that takes the longest too. But it's also fun. Ooh, see, forgot the earrings. I come back for that. And I don't want to give him a lipstick, but I do want to take, um, I might just use that blue right on his lips. We'll just give him a little bit of a color to his lips so they pop out a little bit. And just bracing my one hand on the other to steady myself when I'm getting details. Get that nose def definition back. one of the things I love about minis is they're just so versatile. I mean, think about just this exact same mini. Well, I mean, he does have, in, in the release that we have right now, he does have a water genie, fire genie, um, earth, and uh, air all, you know, because it's all about the elements. But this exact same mini painted with, you know, reds and yellows down here would look like fire too, so... It's just so many things you can do with, and that's one of the reasons I absolutely love having a 3D printer is um, I'm not the only person in the house that likes to paint. So I can't tell you how many times I would go to the store and come home with a new mini and my daughters and I would like fight over who gets to paint this one. And I'd literally, oh, speaking of minis, sorry, that was my timer for <laughs> minis or downstairs are done printing. Um, we literally come home from the store after buying minis and write our name on the outside of the package so that somebody else in the house didn't paint the minis that we had bought for ourselves. And now I can just, if we all three want to paint the same mini, I can just print three of them. Yeah, his eyes are just not working in this purple. So, oops, I shifted everything. I'll have to come back to that in a minute. I don't know what I do I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna set him aside and I'm gonna get my water guy back out, my water spell. And I'm gonna just do kind of a final coat of that dry brushing of the white to just get those final really, really high whites. And it's just gonna be those really high spots where I want those super brights. Again, just sticking with that f the flow of the the wave itself. <laughs> this mini is making me want to make sure I have a an elemental caster soon so that I can throw him out on the table.
Joe's teeth nice and bright. Because he's bitey. He's Bitey McBiterson. That is his name. That's Bitey McBiterson. I'm sure Ty loves the fact that I've named him something stupid. <laughs> Man, I just... I love this model so much. I mean, I have a tendency to, to move, you know, to like things water-based anyway. Um, but it's just all those little details. All right. I am going to call Bitey McBiterson done. So he raw, is all finished. Roar. Jason Parler Gaming says, so Dawn, my next campaign for you should be either underwater or a pirate high seas campaign. Yes. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to play water or pirates with Kiri because, you know, mimics. Not so good with her. <laughs> don't, don't tell her. Don't tell him I said that, though. What, what do you mean? I don't... <laughs> Oh, we just recently saw. She's, or they're always going after treasure. Oh, I just play him. Uh, but I am totally up for either one of those themes. Um, I have a whole set from the same print, uh, the same designer, um, that is all underwater. Uh. That's where the turtle that I was talking about earlier is also from him. Uh, I think I sent you, Jake, uh, in Discord, in our Discord, I think I sent you pictures of that turtle. Like forever ago, when I was trying to decide what to print. Gaming says, yeah, that turtle I was so excited for. Yes. So I still haven't printed him. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because I want to put a little bit of a dry brush on his braid, but I don't want to hit his skin with it. Uh, 1996 says, the new Warlock patron from Tasha's would be perfect for that setting. That would be fun. I haven't played a Warlock in... Ever. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the last time I played a Warlock. I'm just barely hitting his hair with the white. I don't really want to give him any um, like white streaks, but I want to give it a little tiny highlight there. I don't know what to do with his eyeballs yet. Let's try that blue. Parlor Gaming agrees, yes, yes, it would. <laughs> All right, eyeballs again. That shows up much better. Bonking my head on the light. We are close, guys. We are super, super close. I just got to get the right tip going there. And I do recommend highly, I mean, brushes are going to get torn up. Just understand that. And I mean, these aren't the most expensive brushes in the world, but I do use a um, brush cleaner and preserver. So this one works really good for me. It's like waxy. Um, I do highly recommend taking care of your brushes, even if you don't buy the super expensive ones, because they'll last you a while. And even when the 
tip is gone and you just can't use it to paint anymore, then it's a dry brush for a while. So. Why do I always get one eye perfect and then mess up the other one? Just gonna get pretty broad strokes on these eyes and then I'm gonna use that brown because you can see that I've just made a, a big old mess of this. So I'm gonna use the, the desert, his skin tone to come back in and clean this up in a minute. But for right now, I just want a nice good coat on there. And then I'm gonna come back and get his earrings, but I'll just use this gold that I've got sitting out. Because he's got two top piercings up here and one piercing down at the lower ear, which went way too much. So Q-tip to the rescue. There, that works. I had too much water on my brush is what happened. I'm going to put a little gold around the end of his braid, like where his uh, ponytail would be, just to give that a little accent. I'm trying to get in between him and the braid as well, just at least far enough around so that when you twist, you can you don't see that black spot make it look odd and I think because I put those shoulder straps in that red don't really like the nipple rings being in the red so I'm going to come back over those with the gold as well and as long as you don't put super heavy coats of paint you can come back over the paint multiple layers it's when you slab it on really thick the first go around trying to get it all done in one coat you lose all of the detail of the many so you're always better off painting thin coats and having to paint multiple coats rather than trying to get it all done in one go unless of course that's what you're going for is just a something that's done and ready to throw on the table then for all you know Oh, for that matter, if, you, if that's really what you're going for, I recommend a base coat and dry brush to bring it up. You're good to go. It's a really simple way. I'm going to go along his hairline with this by that red again just to clean it up a little bit. Um, it's a really quick way to get a beautiful contrast of paint on a paint job in a really quick manner is a dark colored uh, base coat, nice and solid, nah, that's better. And then uh, just a, a really nice highlight, you know, con contrasting color for that uh, dry brush coat on the top. And then I'm gonna say he's got a ponytail right there as well. So I'm gonna take that as gold as well, just to highlight that. And I'm just taking a good look over him and seeing if there's anything else I want to change. I think the only thing that I really want to do is put back in that swirl down there, deepen that back up again with my blue. But this time I will water it down with the, with the blue shade that I have here.
and this time I'm actually swirling around with it to kind of guide it into the gear or the gears. Good Lord. Still thinking about that game. Um, into the, the grooves that I wanted in rather than just slapping it on this time because I am so close to done. And you'd be surprised how many times I come in and I, I'll do a coat of um, shade and then I'll do uh, a dry brush highlights and then I'll come back and do, when that's dry, I'll do shade again and then just going back and forth between a dry brush and a shade and a dry brush and a sh shade and, and I realize, oh, I don't really need to paint, paint anymore. And I just realized that I have got a tiny piece of, where are my tweezers, of support left down in there in the groove. There they are. So I'm going to get my tweezers and see if I can get that out. Yeah. Well, that's actually just a support from when I was printing. Just managed to survive being in there. <laughs> and they do that. But I used to be really stressed out if I ever left a single support. And then I thought about it of like, well, what's the very first thing I do when I get out a Reaper Mini? I clean it up. So I don't feel so bad anymore. I still try to clean them up as absolutely best as I can, but. All right, so now I'm gonna clean up right by his eyes. I'm getting the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of paint. And even as I draw it out of my paint palette here, I'm spinning my paint brush itself to keep that really fine tip on there. And I'm just cleaning up around his eyes because the glow effect is absolutely not working, which is what I want to do, but why fight it? And I'm just going to give him blue eyes that are solid blue. Go ahead and fix his cheeks. And I, um, what do you call it up there? Good Lord. I really can't think of the word. Where women put makeup. <laughs> well, where people put makeup is what I should say. His eyes are cleaned up. I'm going to put a little bit of that. You know, I think I'm going to use this Heather Blue for his lips. And again, I'm just spinning my brush to get a really good fine tip. And very little paint on there because I just want to, I want to kiss his lips. And I'm doing them blue, obviously, because he's water. And I don't want a red lip on him. It would look weird. Just enough to see that smirk that he's doing. There we go. So there's a few pieces that are not quite white enough for me. So I'm still using that same really fine brush and I'm just doing a real gentle white on those curves that I think should be much brighter. And there's not much of them, but there's a few. Other than that, he is done. Right on the outside of this one. So I definitely went over the time, but it's not too bad for two minis, right? What was my time total? We are at two hours and four minutes right now. Okay. That's it. It's not too bad for two minis. All right. I, oops, I'm going to officially call him 
done. I'm not going to quite pop him off of my stand yet because I just did some details around his base. But here he is in all his water glory. So today we kind of went over um, some basics as well as a, little, a few more advanced things like the um, oh, wet blending and things like that. But in general, I'm pretty happy with how he came out. I'm pretty happy with my first stream. So, uh, Tyler, if you want to go over the company information or you, you have a graphic for me I, uh, for our shop and such. For our shop, I do not have a graphic. I'm actually looking for the... <laughs> um, again, you can find these minis. Uh, the STLs on the Monster Mini Monster Mayhem on My Mini Factory. You can find all the STLs for anything that he has. Uh, if you do join his Patreon, you will get a discount on all of his files. But he only sells files, so if you want the printed minis, uh, you can come to us because we can do that for you. Um, like I said earlier, we will be in... Collinsville, Illinois in June, and then in July we'll be in Kansas City, um, and our website will have these listed. Um, and I can't think of anything else, my love. Thank you for joining me. I'm, I'm dropping in uh, the <laughs> Shopify now if anybody is interested in us yes. printing these for you. Uh, and we do have more than what's listed on our Shopify. I'm in the process of getting all of those listed. But we have so many minis that it will take me a while to list them all. Uh, Jake from Parlor Gaming says, oh, I'm sorry, Elm 1996 is nice. Jake from Parlor Gaming says, Dawn, that looks awesome. Elm 1996 oh. is later. Do one more thanks, shot. Thanks for the borderline. Like, yes. Uh, stuff. That, was, that was fun, Elm 1996. That was a lot of fun to hear about. Thank you so much for sharing that content with us. Let's see if I can. So our little water guys. Roar! <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.